Welcome to Learn Reality Consult, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to give a presentation on an important topic, and that is mapping the real world. Isn't it exciting to learn something about mapping the real world? Okay, let's continue. What are the various processes we usually undertake? when we want to represent some parts of the real world or the real earth on a map. Today's presentation will hover around the process of taking something that exists in our real world and put it on a regular map. And what is the thinking that goes on behind that? How does that work? Let's just talk about that a little bit. Let's say this is our real world, as shown on the screen. Imagine we are floating above it. This is from a satellite image. But imagine that you are able to somehow levitate above the ground. This is the town of Accra, Ghana, showing the built up and non built up areas. Built up, built up built up and non built up sea spaces and then the sea so if we look down at this image we can see a lot of things what can you see on this image what can you see on this image i can see buildings Buildings. These are buildings. I can see sea. See the water. I can see the sea. And this is the roads. This is Professor Atamil's High Street. And this is Kwate Kojo Street. And this is a runabout. These are turns that I can see. This is Gamache Road. Gamache Road. These are some things that I can see. We have some restaurants. Booking restaurant, fast food. There are a lot of things that you can see on this satellite image. So what am I trying to portray here? I'm trying to portray that this point in time that there is an infinite amount of complexity that you can potentially put on your map. So not to be too radical, but are you really going to try and map everything that you see in the real world? Certainly not. You cannot map everything that you see on the real world. What is the amount of detail that appropriate or useful for you? And how much is too much? You have to be clear about the details that you want to show on your map. Maybe you don't even need to map all the buildings. So which objects? Which things do you want to have on your map? And which things do you want to exclude? And how much detail do you want to have on your map? These are very important questions as a map maker or a cartographer you need to put at the back of your mind. The more detail that you put on your map, the more complex it is. This kind of question that now you as a map maker or cartographer, or someone who is collecting data, identify orbit, you have to go through this process and think about what I want to put on there. So, Let's take it that this is our 
simplified version of reality. This is the same location as you can probably see um, um, Bolden here. Bolden, you can see the root. You can see the uh, the code. Quite a street. You can see the runabout I indicated earlier on, and you can certainly see the sea. So, how can these, the roads, the buildings, the sea, how can you represent them on a digital map? How can we store data about them? And then how do we do that? How do we do that? We usually do that through what we know as a model. What is then a model? When you tell someone to model in GIS language, what does that mean? To model, it means that you, you you want to describe that is to describe or to represent you are representing it some way or you are describing it then so what is then a model it's a schematization of reality with operational potentials so schematization of reality and the operational potentials. Very, very, very important keywords in the definition of what a model is. So in summary, a model is an object or concept that is used to represent something else. It is reality scaled down and converted to a form we can comprehend. In short, a model is a simplification of a real world. We've seen a real world situation, and you simplify it. So simplification of the real world. That is what a model. So let's continue with our definition of what a model is. A model is manageable, comprehensible, schematic representation of piece of reality. So these keywords usually run through. Schematization, so you schematic representation. So this is a representation and then reality. A model should be able to be understood. Comprehensibility is very key in modeling. So, let's define these keywords. What does the, the term reality mean in the definition? That is, it means that there's no hypothetical system. And what is piece of reality means? A piece of reality means limited domain in time and space. So bound by time and space. It's a schematic representation. Schematic representation from a specific point of view. You are looking at the model from a specific point of view, not a generalized point of view. And we have representation, an infinite number of projections, a comprehensible representation, a comprehensible representation. It should be giving the user the resource they need. We are modeling it for a particular purpose. So it should, be, it should give you uh, the resource that is required. So let's 
move on further in our presentation. What is geographic phenomena? Mm, this is an important question. As a, a GI experts or people who want to learn about GIS, we want to know what a geographic phenomenon is. A geographic phenomenon is a manifestation of an entity or process of interest that one can be named or described, can be georeferenced, assigning special attributes, special location of the object, can be assigned a time interval at which was or is present. Note, however, note, not all relevant information about phenomena has the form of a triplet. For example, no name. Is it all geographical phenomena that has a name? If it is an undescribed object, an object that is undescribed. No georeference, a special legal document. And in no time, a phenomenon that exists permanently. Permanently, it exists permanently. It has no time limitation. So let's continue. Types of geographic phenomena. Types of geographic phenomena. Let's see the various types of geographic phenomena. One type is a, a geographic field. Very important to note. One type of geographic phenomena is a geographic field, which means that uh, for every point in the study area, a value can be determined. Maybe this is a study area. For every point in the study, a value can be determined. And that value is not necessary to be the same. Keep it at the back of your mind. This type of data is seen throughout the mapped area and smoothly transitions from one value to another. Another type of geographic phenomena is geographic object so what is the geographic object geographic phenomena geographic object does not cover the total study area the space in between object is potentially empty or undetermined so it's just the opposite of a, a geographic field a geographic object Opposite is geographic field. Keep note, keep it at the back of your, your mind. Let's see, continue. Task of geographic phenomena. Objects. Objects. And that is building. Buildings is an example of objects and what are the, some of the characteristics of geographic objects they have crisp boundaries so the boundaries are defined inside the boundary only one value they are not different it's one value so types of geographic phenomena Another type is geographic fault, as I indicated earlier. An example is an elevation. Elevation, you see, elevation, elevation. So, field examples are temperature changes doesn't happen it doesn't have one changes it proceeds 
gradually the elevation same thing even if an area is flat elevation can be measured at any point but the change in elevation is minimal so it's, it's a gradual changes so types of geographic phenomena they have continuous force continuous force Continuous force as indicated, field value change changes gradually as indicated earlier on a geographic force. So the gradient can be measured as a change of elevation. So assuming this is a, our Cartesian plane, this is our y, y axis, and this is x. This is y and this is x axis. This x axis. So this is the height and this is the length and this is the slope. This is the slope. So how do we calculate the slope? So slope is a change in y change in the values of y divided by change in the value of x so for y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so let's assume in there if we have the y to be 4 the change we have y to be 4 and we have x to be 7 Seven, so it will be represented as four slope is called four over seven, which is zero point five seven one. That is the uh, slope. So let's continue. Types of geographic phenomena: discrete, discrete force. Uh, this is an example of a, a discrete force. Discrete fields mean individual separate, so the boundaries are separated, well defined boundaries. Example of a discrete fields are land classifications. See, we have ge geological classes, soil types, loamy clay, gravel, all those soil types, sandy soil. And then land use types, maybe for residential, agriculture, for commercial, for agriculture, built up. All these are land use types. So crop types or natural vegetation types. And then two ways of showing things on the map. The main things that I want you to get out of this is that at this point, we have two different ways of showing things. One is showing it to, through it in the form of continuous. Another way is through a discrete form. For a continuously over space or things like elevation, it's an example of uh, a continuous uh, representation another good example is uh, an air temperature which is this everywhere so you don't look out at the sky and say to your friend hi kwasi today's temperature is 34 degrees you can't see it it's not there it's just something that varies continuously but then you have things that are discrete objects. An example is what? Buildings. And then we have the edges of rows. That kind of things are called discrete objects. So, so this land cover classification, for example, they have these very crisp clear boundaries on the edges of the zones. 
as I indicated earlier on. So do you think that is actually indicative of reality? This image, is it an indicative of reality? Are you saying that if you move to these areas, you see this kind of distinct boundary separating the line used times agricultural forest? Is it possible? Probably not. So, someone had to make that choice about where do we think that uh, the boundaries will be, where the agriculture area will be, and where um, forest area will be. So, how are we going to define it? Then we can draw a boundary. A map that will help people to understand those different areas as represented. So let's continue. What is then a data model? In all our conversations and the presentation and earlier slides, we mostly refer to data. So what is down data model? A data model is a way of representing data that simplifies reality. That is representing data with the aim of what simplifying what reality. We can use vector data models for discrete objects, rasa data models for continuous phenomena. This important aspect of data models, vector data model and raster data models will be explained in my next tutorials. Kindly give comments about how you feel about this presentation. And kindly let me know if there are some areas that I need to improve. Your suggestions are welcome in bringing good content to you. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.